Welcome to the 26th episode of SpaceX in the News. Today we're going to look and see what's been going on with Starship and Star Hopper down in Boca Chica, Texas. Then we'll dive into a meeting that Elon had with the military a couple weeks ago, see what that's all about. We'll go over some upcoming launches for the month of May. Then we're going to finish this episode out not with an honorable mention, but with some news about this channel. It's exciting stuff, guys. Stick around. Let's get started. No yelling on the bus! So how do you guys like the new intro? Pretty sweet, right? I've decided to make it fun and add a movie quote to the end of each intro from now on. So if you know the movie this quote came from, go ahead and leave the answer down in the comment section. If you win, you get, I don't know, brownie points or a metaphorical high five. But anyway, on to Boca Chica, Texas. So Starhopper has been engineless now for several weeks, but Elon did take to Twitter to answer a couple questions from one of my buddies in the Facebook group, SpaceX Boca Chica, who asked, was there any issue with Raptor 2 during Boca Chica testing? And Elon replied, no, just preparing for an untethered hover test. And then Elon was asked, are untethered tests going to start with Raptor 1 or 3? And Elon said, one. And then another one of you, my subscriber, got your question answered by Elon as well. Reagan asked, was that indeed the Raptor SN3 herp from SpaceX McGregor yesterday for an incredible 40 seconds? And Elon said, yes, indeed it was. Or actually, he just said yes. So SpaceX is firing these Raptor engines that are going to go on Starhopper for longer and longer durations, and we're past 40 seconds now. And Elon just admitted that the next task they want to accomplish is an untethered flight of Starhopper. So that's really great. Maybe in a couple weeks we'll see this big hunk of steel take to the air. That would be sweet, brah. Now shifting focus to the Starship orbital prototype, more stacking has progressed, this time with the two tapered sections. If you remember back to last week, SpaceX stacked the nose cone on one of the top tapered sections. This time, however, it looks like SpaceX stacked the third and fourth pieces from the top. And now not only that, the local landscape is starting to progress as well. Last week, I asked you guys what you think this new addition to the complex is. I've read a lot of theories out there on the internet of what this could be, but honestly, guys, I'm thinking this might be the hangar for Super Heavy. That's the booster that's going to lift Starship into space. But I could be wrong. What do you guys think? I think you're wrong, Kevin. Don't just tell me I'm wrong. Tell me what you think it is. Gah. And what else is pretty sweet is that Elon just released a couple renderings of Starship on the moon and on Mars. See that, guys? These photos are fakes. Therefore, space and everything you love is fake. Let's move on to our next story here, and that's Elon talking to the military. A couple weeks ago, Elon met with the Air Force and the Air Force Space Command and the Joint Force Space Component Commander, as well as the commander of the North American Aerospace Defense Command. Ugh. And I'm former military, and that was tough for me to say. To discuss future space operations and homeland defense innovation. Now, I know that seems pretty bland in general, pun intended, and there was only a few photos released at the time, and really that was all that was released, including this picture of Elon holding the Starship model, which I want. But just the other day, a little bit more information was revealed about the discussions they had. According to the next big future, the Air Force had spoken to SpaceX about moving cargo in space, and specifically how the BFR could do it. And now we know why Elon was holding that model of Starship. But being more specific and apart from cargo operations, the Air Force wanted to look at pre-positioning equipment and supplies in orbit, which would be on standby to drop to Earth. Now I find that just fascinating. It reminds me of a movie. All right, let's move on to some upcoming launches. SpaceX's CRS-17 flight, the Cargo Dragon to resupply the International Space Station, has been delayed yet again. This time to May 3rd, but I'm assuming it's still going to be at the wee hours of the morning. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do a live webcast of this launch because I'll be on a field trip. Yay for me. Well, here's a fun fact, or not so fun fact for you. The booster of CRS-17 will be landing on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, even though it was originally meant to land on landing zone one. And that's because that's where the Crew Dragon exploded the other week. And boy, did it create quite the debris field. Oh, and by the way, there has been no word yet from SpaceX or NASA as to what exactly caused this Crew Dragon explosion. But as soon as I hear something, I'll let you know something. If you don't already find that thing before I do. But in my personal and extraordinarily humble opinion, the more exciting flight is Starlink 1 that's coming up in mid-May. This will be the first official Starlink flight and it will carry somewhere between 10 and 20 satellites into orbit. SpaceX was recently approved by the FCC to lower their orbital altitudes of their satellites from 1,300 kilometers down to 550. At these lower altitudes, these satellites are not closer to the atmosphere, but actually further into the atmosphere, where these gaseous molecules that kind of make their way up into the upper reaches of the atmosphere, actually collide with these satellites and slow them down over time. Where at the previous altitude, it would have taken over 100 years for these satellites to reorbit. Now at this lower altitude, if something goes wrong, it will only take less than five years to deorbit these satellites, which creates less space junk. But I know what you're thinking. Isn't SpaceX going to use these satellites for longer than five years if they work? Well, the answer is yes. And I assume from time to time, these satellites will have to turn on their electric haul thrusters and accelerate a little bit to keep from falling back into the Earth. Another bright side to orbiting these satellites at lower altitudes is that it will bring in 
advantage to broadband users by reducing the latency of its communication signals to as low as 15 milliseconds. And keep in mind, this is just the first 1,500 satellites that SpaceX is going to put into orbit for their Constellation project. In all, SpaceX will deploy over 7,500 broadband satellites at altitudes from 335 kilometers to 346 kilometers. And that's still a portion, albeit a large portion, of the almost 1,200 satellites that they need to put up. The guys over at Tesslarati did the math, and they concluded that SpaceX will actually need to build and launch an average of 100 satellites per month, that's over 20 per week, for the next five years in order to complete this constellation on time. However, I'll finish this topic off with a quote from the president of SpaceX herself, Gwen Shotwell, who said, quote, this approval underscores the FCC's confidence in SpaceX's plans to deploy its next generation satellite constellation and connect people around the world with reliable and affordable broadband service. Starlink production is well underway and the first group of satellites have already arrived at the launch site for processing. Strap yourselves in guys, we're a go. Okay, so like I said, there's no honorable mention this week. I'll try to get one in the next video. I might do one on Space Force. That would be exciting, right? But today I wanna to talk about some exciting news concerning this channel. So if you didn't notice already, I'm using a new camera and it's a lot more clear. You can see my ugly face a lot better now. You're welcome, I guess. I guess you're well, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. And that's just one of several new pieces of equipment I got to better this channel so I can give you guys better content. But the real exciting news that I've been dying to share with you that I've been working on really hard for the last, I don't know, week and a half is that this channel now has a Patreon account. A lot of you guys have reached out and told me that you want me to have one. I even took a poll a few months back asking you guys if I should do a Patreon. And out of the 95 of you that answered this particular question, 71% of you said, do it. I put a link to the Patreon page down in the description. So click on it, check it out. If you like it, sign up, support this channel. I'd really appreciate it, you guys. Like every other YouTube that uses Patreon, the more patrons this channel has, the better content I can create for you guys. And it's right on time too, because summer break is right around the corner where I'm gonna have tons of free time to give you guys awesome stuff. Seriously, you should check out some of these membership benefits. And that's where I'm gonna make myself available to communicate with you guys back and forth all the time. And the best part is, and what's really rad, is that if you sign up right now, there's already some exclusive content ready for your viewing pleasure. I might just sign up myself. So hopefully I'll be seeing you there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Godspeed and high five. Oh God.